It's a gathering of leaders of various civil society organizations who have worked in the electoral space in Nigeria. They are here to make public presentation of recommendations for electoral reforms as the National Assembly prepares for another round of amendments to the existing electoral laws. The memorandum we present today focuses on three core pillars of the electoral legal framework for the conduct of elections. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999, the Electoral Act 2022, and INEC regulations and guidelines for elections. These proposals aim to strengthen the independence of INEC, improve the processes for electoral adjudication, and refine key constitutional provisions to ensure fairness, transparency, and inclusivity in our electoral process. The group is recommending 16 priority areas for the National Assembly to look into. These include the recommendation for the unbundling of INEC, the establishment of Electoral Offenses Commission, political party reforms and diaspora voting. The group also speak on the need for the National Assembly to consider reforms around election results management process and election adjudication. I think the point about collation of results have been tackled. It's contained in the memo. What needs to be done? We need greater transparency, you know, in our results collation um, process, even if it means subjecting it to some sort of independent audit of the voters of the results process is critical. In this memo, we also have provisions around how to strengthen the election adjudication process. And more importantly, We've advanced detailed recommendations on issues relating to the timelines for concluding election um, disputes. We also look at the need for the courts to, um, in the course of um, addressing or resolving electoral disputes, be guided by certain democratic values and, and principles. The group hopes to pass the documents to the National Assembly to serve as a crucial resource as the lawmakers embark on a fresh electoral reform exercise. All right, well, we have to start that conversation right now, and it's got to do with the elections and civil society organizations. Recently, we got uh, a very interesting uh, write up. Really, let's put it that way, from the Upper Progressives Congress, criticizing civil society organizations. In fact, particularly Yaga Africa, uh, whose director you saw there, Mr. Samson Itodu, uh, on that report, uh, accusing them of, of not knowing what their boundaries are. Are they crossing the line? And, and these recommendations that have been made, these recommendations that have been made by these these civil society organizations that we saw in that report, uh, they're going to move that to the National Assembly we hear. What sort of results can they get from that? It's not the first time they've said this sort of thing. Uh, so, so what's the outcome? What improvements have we had in our electoral process since then? Well, join us right now to answer these and more questions. We have Mr. Victor Giwa, who's an election observer. He's joining us here in the Abuja studios. Thank you so much for being with us on the program. Thanks so much for having me. Last time I saw you was in Edo. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was in it. How, how was it? Yeah, it was fine. I was in the, I was one of, of course, one of the INEC uh, accredited observers. Yes. I observed with my team the elections. I was at the coalition center. So I saw it all from the beginning to the end of the process, you know, so that we can have a full grip of what really happened. An overview of that process in, in, in your mind. Can we, can we hear what <laughs> your thoughts are personally? Yeah. Before okay, we get yeah. into civil society. Okay, yeah. So firstly, it was... Um, it was supposed to be a very fair process. The, the, I was happy with what I saw from the beginning of the exercise, uh, from 8.30 when it was supposed to start. Of course, a lot of um, the polling units did not open us at that time. Then towards the end, in, in each of the polling units, where the counting of the votes and recording of the vote and uploading of the results to the IRF, I was happy because uh, the impression we had before the election on that day was this issue of violence, there's going to be violence based on the vitriolics coming from the politicians, tension, the, the whole environment was heated up. But we saw little 
or I didn't, you know, there was no report from my own observers about 40 of them that were sent to the, to the you know, 18 local governments of any, of any sort. So I was really happy. Unfortunately, that, that is my state. So I was excited that, oh, the Edo people have come out, you know. But it was just after the collection of results at the unit level, then we started hearing about, you know, issues of coalition at the local government uh, level. And um, of course, getting to the coalition center, the final result, I, I just felt that there were a lot of things um, that went wrong that was supposed to have been addressed. You know, one of the things that really stood out for many of us from this election was vote buying. In fact, we heard the Labour Party candidates, the governorship candidate for the Labour Party, Mr. Lumi Diapata, uh, yesterday, I think it was on, on Politics Today, where he said, look, we basically went into this process, <laughs> we went into a gunfight with a pen knife. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, we, we, said we, we, went, we went into a gunfight with a pen knife and we didn't have the money. We, and, and, but he instructively said, even if we did, we wouldn't have been vote buying. Yeah, it, but but it, it does feed into the narrative that we've gotten about the elections in, in Edo. It was willing buyer, willing seller. In fact, those were his words, willing buyer, willing seller. So it, everyone just came there to make some money, made some money and, and left. No, well, I, I... He even said people from his party. He, he, was, he was specific. He said people from my party did this. They went and they sold their votes, collected money and left. Well, uh, there was issue of vote buying, but uh, I don't see it as a major issue in this election. Okay. No, no, You're no. You're the second person I, to say that. Yes, I've not. Yeah, we, we, we've, I've been observing election for the past 15 years. So I will say that I'm an election. I'm a lawyer. I belong to a civil society organization. Yeah. I, I can put myself as an election expert. So from what we have seen in the past compared to what happened in the dual election, uh, the issue of vote buying, uh, if amongst one to five, I don't think it would be four. What was the biggest issue for you? The, the biggest issue is the wrong coalition of results at the at the at the and the militarization of the process. Yeah, because the, the heavy amount of security and security interference with the process. To me, that is the major issue. So whether you know people uh, we, we were at the polling unit, we knew that somehow people seem to come into the polling unit with the intention to to vote and maybe be compensated for it with any form. But if you look at the electoral process itself, from the basis of campaign to where the, you start voting, mm -hmm. you cannot, you cannot <laughs> demonetize money from the politics. People go into elections, you buy, you give, you within your campaign, you tell them, you give them money, you buy things for them. That is where the monetization starts. So Nigerians and the voters, of course, because of the level of intelligence and because of the failure of leadership and governance, People see that opportunity as oh, this is the this is one time that we think that uh, maybe we will just get for coming to the side. Of course, wrongly as it were, but you know it's something they do in this particular instance. Except in very remote cases where you see it brazenly, you know. But you see people, you will know that somebody voted, and so the one of the agents will say, "Have you voted?" Okay. Go that go your go that way. It maybe mm -hmm. is telling you go that way to collect, mm -hmm. you know, something and all that. But again, how are you sure that the the person who voted, which is that is which is a secret process, you know, is it the thing is a closed system. It is not you don't show your ballot paper. Anik has been able to provide you know laws on modalities where you don't have to unlike what they were doing before, where you go to the your the voting cubicle. You cast your vote, you snap it, <laughs> and you show it to the agent that look, go and vote for party A. And the party agent tells you, okay, good, you are entitled to your. No, that wasn't what we saw. It was just promise three people say, okay, if you vote for me, I may give you A. And the person goes and somehow, you know. So we can't really, you know, say that is exactly what changed the narrative. If anybody says that, that person is not setting the facts. It, it, the conversation around electronic voting also came up as a. As as a result of the um, Edo elections, you know, people think if, if we had electronic voting in our system, maybe some of these irregularities that are being reported would not be as rampant. Uh, but, but we did hear former President Gulag Jonathan say electronic voting is not the solution. Where do you stand on you, electronic voting and what it can do to Nigeria's electoral process? You see, the truth of the matter is this. Nigerians seem to be confused about what, where the problem lies. I've listened to a lot of analysts and they say, oh, technology, like, okay, Gulag Jonathan have mentioned the fact that 
to him, this election shows that technology could not, could not solve our problem. But I can tell you where the problem is. The problem is in our willpower. Our politicians have refused to obey the laws. Politicians have refused, have, have chosen to breach the law brazenly. And I will give you an example. Let us take the issue of vote buying, Edo State, as a case study. If you accuse any political party, political party of vote buying, who had the political parties are you accusing? Let us look at the two major parties, the PDP, the APC. Who are the APC? They're the government in power, presidency. Who are the PDP? They're the government in the state. And the state is, is governed by a, a governor who is from PDP. Vote buying is an offense. Yes, it is. So why are you people involved in it? So you could see that the politicians themselves are breaching the law. So our problem is not it's not the question of the law or what if you bring the computer and can tell you politicians can even steal the device. So it is the problem is not the law. The problem is not the device. Section 40, sub 2 of the Electoral Act says that the process of voting will commence by accreditation through the smart card reader, which in this case is the beavers. But I can submit to you that a lot of results were announced that did not pass through the beavers. Question, why didn't you use beavers? Section 40 says that when any process is done without the beavers, that place should be recorded as no election. How come there were elections in units that agents now came up to say, oh, we didn't use beavers? That is the question. Who are the people that are supposed to be in charge? Who should raise the, who should raise the flag? Candidates have their political agents in every unit. The language used by the Electoral Act is the candidate or his political agent. Mm -hmm. Every political agent, every political, every candidate that participates in the election, they are supposed to have a candidate in that unit. Election is conducted at the unit. As a matter of fact, we have seen cases where people say, oh, it was at the collection center, they did whatever. If you undo your unit very well, election is conducted, you take your result sheet, which is you are entitled to as a political party agent or a candidate. You can correlate it to inside your party room and come back. You see, the electoral, that's why I said, it's not the issue of whether you're using device, whether those things could reduce the risk of corruption and compromise in the process. Mm. But let me tell you, a willing mind that is ready to compromise will, will, will bypass all the process. We abuse the law. We abuse the device. We compromise the device. We compromise officials to ensure that they want to arrive at what they intended to do. In your view, the elections in Edo State, were they free, fair? No, the, the, the result, the process was free, was the but the election. result was not fair. Okay, so the process was free. And, you, and, you, and I can tell you why I got to that point. I want to, I want to be able to be clear on that. Good. So the process... The process was free. Mm -hmm. The result was not a fair result. How so? How does that work? Correct. The new electoral act tells us that you can have a fair process and a wrong result. How does it happen? During the coalition of results, somebody at the point of coalition can just add and remove. And the law also made a provision, another section for the so six or chapter six, mm -hmm. to say you can correct errors in the result. So you think the elect the results were manipulated? I, yes, I felt that the results were not corrected. The, the results were not correct. APC wrote a letter to civil society organizations, Yaga Africa in particular. And I want, I want to read part of what they said, and, and you tell me what you think. Alleging that results were manipulated without hard facts and figures, but based on some statistical guesswork, is clear the service to the electoral process. Yaga Africa's report is a travesty, replete with methodical flaws, politicized observations, inconsistencies, inaccuracies, and calls its credibility into question. Election observer missions are not election management agencies and cannot usurp INEX. INEX statutory authority as a sole election management body in Nigeria. Doing so will constitute a clear breach of the Electoral Act and the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Correct. Correct. Now, the fact is that as observers, we have our limits. You just said that the results were manipulated. Yes, and, that is, what, and that is part of the observation. Yeah. The observation is for you to say that the results were not correct. Well, so of, it is right for him to says say is that if you are, if you are saying that results are manipulated without hard facts, that you actually 
uh, you actually, well, not you, he's, they were referring to Yaga Africa in particular. Yeah. But basically, as election observers, when you say something like the election results were manipulated, you have the hard facts to back that up. Okay, good. I said that the results are not correct. And now when results are not correct, it might not necessarily mean they were manipulated. It could be error because there are figures. It could be error in calculation. It could be ignorance as a result of people collating, and it could be as a result of compromise. And the electoral has contemplated that provision. And that is why it says under section 40, 46 sub 6 that when during coalition of results, there are disputes as to the results, the returning officer has the right to verify. And how do you verify? It is provided in section 6. Look at the results that have been transmitted, and look at what is recorded, and now look at it together, that was the duty of the returning officer as at that time. Funny enough, and good enough, in that coalition center I was there, and one of the first questions I put to one of the agents who was raising issue of, oh, when there is declared the result in each of the local government in the coalition center, he will say, oh, this result is not correct, there was, there was, there was violation. Mm -hmm. I stood up as an observer and said, look, I am aware of section 46 that says, where there are errors, why not come with the particulars? And that is the failure of political party. When you are alleging error, at the coalition center, the coalition center provides, and the law provides you to dispute a, an election result. Even in like, under, section, under section 46 and 40, he said, even when the returning officer has declared results, INEC has the power within seven days to determine whether or not the declaration made by the returning officer is based on the law or truth. It was done voluntarily. Because the law also contemplates that there are situations where the result might not be correct. So I was telling one of the agents who was raising that point at the coalition said that it is not enough for you to say, oh, they manipulated the result. We have agents in unit A, B. Mm -hmm. The result you just declared. I have all the, for example, we have all the police unit results in the a local government haven't calculated it. The figure you are declaring that is in your IRF is not correct. What do you do? You present it to the returning officer. The law says he should verify with what was uploaded and what was recorded and come to his own conclusion to know whether or not the results were correct. Election does not end in the coalition center in the local government. The real part where the election ends is at the final coalition center in the, in, the, in the coalition of results for the governorship. But most political part, political party failed to follow it through. So when they got to the coalition center, they just made, you know, very alarming, bogus claim. But you need to come with particulars so that you can confront the returning officer that you cannot declare that result because that result is incorrect. I want to be able to look at some of the demands made by civil society organizations before we get Ayo to join us. So Ayo would have a few questions for you. But, you know, the, these demands, well, this report by civil society that observed these elections, we've heard these kinds of recommendations before. I've heard this before on bundling of INEC, uh, establishment of electoral offenses commission. We've heard this before. <laughs> Political party reform, diaspora voting, constituency delimination, voter register and voter registration, women and youth, people with uh, disabilities. You know, political participation. These are things that we've heard over and over again. I want to be able to get from you, who is in civil society, some of the things that you've been demanding for that would, that would give more credibility to Nigeria's electoral process. Over the years, you've been doing this for more than a decade. Has it yielded any results? Have there been any, any of the, what would you say, the major things that have yielded results that were demanded by civil society organizations when it comes to election reform? Correct. We have demanded things like... Um the use of technology. Okay. That is what saw Bivas. We saw, we demanded use of ensuring there's a transparent process. That's what led to the IREV, mm -hmm. that you can now upload results and see. Mm -hmm. So uh, there have been some recommendations that have made that have been incorporated into the laws. But like I said earlier, the problem has never been, short. Sure, let them make all the laws. In as much as they are not going to be angels, it will not be angels who will administer the law. We, we will come back to square one. So our major problem is who are the people who will enforce the law. The major problem is enforcement of that law. So if you have people who are not ready to enforce the law, you will never, we will never get out of this debacle. Mm. So it is not whether you are suggesting, look, we, were, we will continue to suggest till the kingdom come. Look at ordinary section 46, subsection 6 of the Electoral Act that gives the returning officer to verify. 
We were putting, I was putting it to the tongue. He said, no, he just want to declare the result and get out. And why? He's a professor that comes from the University of Technology, Mina. He just want to give up, declare the result. And like the word says, declare the result and run away. Well, let, let's get Ayo to, to weigh in here because I think he's been waiting to ask you a few questions. Go on, Ayo. Thank you, Kayla. You know, for me, the question we want to ask is whether or not the people are benefiting from this entire process. The issues you raise about, uh, you know, the, the process and everything, on the one hand, you know the percentage of people, at least you have a vague idea of the percentage of people that came out to vote, of 2.249 or thereabout voters that collected their PVCs, just election, less than 30%, according to available data, came out to vote. Less than 600,000 people came out to vote during this election. For you, what informed that extremely appalling low voter turnout? Is it that the political parties didn't do their jobs of educating their people? Is it that uh, the electoral umpire didn't carry out enough voter education? Is it that the people are just apathetic? What exactly would you pin that problem on? Good question. I, I will tell you, if Edo is my state, if I was in that state, I wouldn't have voted. If I was in that state as, a, as an indigenous of Edo state, within that circumstances, I wouldn't have also voted. Why? It was not worth it. You could see the prelude to the election. You could see the threats. You could see the shooting. You could see the issue of thuggery. You could see... So, people, as a matter of fact, I, I, I came in, in, into the country on Thursday, and when I was going to the election, even some INEC officials were telling me, oh, do you want to go? You have to be careful. Oh, we have to be careful from what we are hearing from politicians. So the tension created by the politicians were enough to scare voters away. I mean, you are going to, you know, perform your civil rights. And you need to see the, you need to see the military presence. In well, you know, the, even the, that, if you remember, uh, Mr. Mr. Giwa, just one second, if you would remember, you would know that over time, when we hear about all these threats of violence and all, it's, there's always an anticlimax at the end of the day. In most cases, remember Oshun, uh, beg your pardon, Ondo State, in the days of Ogbeni, uh, you know, Akiri Dolu, late Akiri Dolu, who said, look, all the political comments that people are making, they are what he called political gunshots. They don't kill anybody. So, uh, on the one hand, it, are those statements, as people say, but most of the time, from history, they never really, really affect anybody because at the end of the day it's always an anticlimax the election will come and go most of the time you know there is no violence yeah that it and that is what really played out at the end of the day there was really you know in quote no violence but you see i would not want to use my life as an experiment and no nigeria will want to do that so that is why the first thing we need to do is to make sure like i have been saying is to make sure that the people who are saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that the laws are followed. Follow it through. Making, you know, heated statements. You should making words that are capable of resorting to threats and fear is an offense. They are all offenses under the Electoral Act. I next should have called certain persons to order. The, even the security agency should have invited some persons and said, my friend, you made a, a comment, you made a comment A and comment B. These are wrong. You don't have to do that. You know, but when you see a situation where a minister comes on air or shoot anybody you see, because we have seen cases where you shoot people, we call it accidental discharge. When the person is gone, he's gone. So you see, and this is supposed to be a process that people should dance into the unit with excitement, with tea or coffee, and you see, give high five to your friend, and you go and cast your vote. But the impression you see, or you hear, or you feel, is that you are going to have a battle to cast your vote. And so that was major, the major issue that you know, had its sway on the psychology of, of the voters. And we were going around to ask why people did not come out, and they were telling us to. Then the last part of it, the reason why you have low turnout is because of bad leadership. They don't believe that about their votes will count. And like we could see, the, a party is telling you that he won, and the, the other party, a, another party was declared as the winner. So the populists are saying that, look, if we take our time to go to that queue and cast our vote, in the final analysis, my vote will not count. My vote will not count. So why do I need to go there? And that is why you see people go there and ask for money because they know even why they are casting their vote. At the end of the day, 
the vote will not count. Mm. So that is the, those are the major reasons why you see low turnout during the Edo election. I mean, Mr. Victor, you were listening to you. When, you know, I know you mentioned earlier that voter, uh, vote buying wasn't, in your view, one of the major issues, but one of the problems that at least people like us who, are, who have to listen to these things all the time, one of the things we worry about is that poverty could be weaponized. You know, and, and the poorer people get, the less morals they would have, the less convictions they would have. They would want to be able to make as much money as possible. You know, so, so in many ways, it, it is one of the biggest fears when it comes to vote buying. We, the, the, I can't wait for 2027. You know, is the, is the money going to increase? What, what's going to happen? <laughs> is it, I mean, we, it, it, it's, it's something that we'll have to talk about later, me and you. We'll have that conversation after. But I want to thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. For being with us on, on Sunrise Daily. Mr. Victor, you was an election observer. Thanks again. Thank you for having me. Right, let's take a look at some messages. Professor Imonoka uh, and uh, Festus Akimboe. Well, we can see both of your messages. Uh, I hear that we don't have enough time to take them. I apologize. And we'll take a look at your messages tomorrow. I give you my word. I want to thank you very much for being with us. It's Thursday. Have a great day ahead. I'm Kayla Megwa. Good. Accountability will play out tomorrow morning. I'm holding you by that word. Amaya Makide, do have a productive day. <laughs>